afternoon folks. Today we're going to discuss rigging. Now 1st of March is the first day of spring I understand. So have you checked your rigging? When was the last time you checked your rigging? Uh, the rules and regulations of my insurance companies today are that your rigging should be completely renewed every 10 years. Now, some riggers will and some riggers won't agree with this, but rigging is really something, unless you're like me, a boat builder and rigger, it's something you should get a professional to do. Because a professional has the means to test your rig. He has the equipment to test your rig. He can find things about your rigging you would never think of looking at. Uh, a couple of things that you get on rigging that go wrong is the fork that is attached to the deck that holds your shrouds up. That's the wires that hold the mast up. Uh, I have actually seen these pin pins worn nearly right through, but that was on a yacht that was rigged many, many, many years. The other thing is they use what's known as a compression fitting. Now, these are the fittings where the wire is pushed in and it's put into a hydraulic press and put under enormous pressure. It's tons and tons of pressure so that it grips the cable. <coughs> so this is what your rig relies on. You have one at the top and you have one at the bottom. Your rigging also pass through the sh uh, pass through the hounds. Now the hounds is where your spreaders are. That's that's the two pieces that come out from your mast and the wires pass around the outside. I've just recently seen on everything about boats.co.uk their boat had their rig checked and they found that the spreaders had split. Now part of the reason of this could be uh, the rig was over tensioned. Uh, there was uh, oxidization on the end because they had you get these little boots that go on the end plastic or leather boots uh, to protect the sail from the ends of the, um, the shrouds. What happens is it gets water in there. The water can't get out so you've got saltish water or brackish water held against an anodized aluminium fitting and it oxidizes so the, the protection of the aluminium is gone. The aluminium is then susceptible and weakened and can split. So I have a personal tip that I like to use when I re-rigged our boat is a product called Lanagard Grease. It's horrible smelling stuff because it's made from sheep's grease, but it is very, very good for what you use, for what this for this purpose. When when you are having your rigging done, if you ask your rigger, would you mind please putting a coat of Lanagard Grease before any boots are put on my spreaders? I'm sure he'll agree, or well, he won't argue. You he will probably say yes if you like. Okay. Now. <coughs> The company that we're using for the uh, All About Boats, everything about boats.co.uk, is called rigit.co.uk. They are an excellent company. They are professional, they've been doing it a long time, they care about their customers, and they give you sound advice. Uh, as I heard from the people, um, our guys that were on the yacht when they first saw this chat from Rigit. Uh, they said he's, he doesn't have the opinion he's there to make money from you. Obviously, he wants to make a profit, but he wants to have you to have a good rig, a sound rig, and a properly tensioned rig so that your boat is efficient, safe, and sells well. Right, let's get into the rigging. All yachts have a forestay, which may have a roller furling on it. It has a backstay or twin backstays, which keep the yacht four and a half, uh, keep the mast four and a half upright. Then you have cap shrouds that comes from the very top of the mast down outside the spreaders and down to the deck. Then you have lowers, which can be two or sometimes four that come below the spreaders, attached below the spreaders, and they come down to the deck. Now those keep the yacht, the, the mast, sorry, I keep getting this wrong, keep the mast dead straight. So the four stay and aft stay keep it straight fore and aft so it's perpendicular and the lowers stop the middle from bulging outwards and sideways so basically your rig relies on this now one of the problems you get unfortunately people think the marine environment is clean 
it is anything but. And a lot of us have our boats in the marina for probably 80 or 90% of the time of the year where you have pollutants from diesel engines, petrol engines, acid rain, and the bottom fitting, the compression fitting at the bottom of the wires does allow detritus to get in. So you get acid rain in there, you get salt water in there, you get dust and dirt particles, you get diesel pollutants and petrol pollutants that get into that fitting because it's not waterproof. Now you can't make the cable waterproof by the very fact that you have one centre strand and 19 strands outside, the water is going to get in. <coughs> so what happens is the detritus gets more and more, you get again, you get oxidisation. The stainless steel, although it's 316 stainless, very, very strong and very good, will be affected by this detritus. So what happens is, the detritus makes the fitting expand. It also weakens the cable where you have the, the fitting that's compressed and the wire coming into the top. Right here, this is a danger point. Because it's really open to the air, the dirt can oxidize even more. And what happens is you might find one strand or two strands. When our boat was checked, we found that two strands on three of the wires had snapped. When we actually took it off and bent it, the wire snapped. Now, you couldn't see that. I couldn't see it. I had to take it off to check it. Now, you don't want to be saying, right, okay, I'll take my mask down or I'll take a fitting off and I'll have a look. You need professional help. Rig it has the equipment to check your rigging. Professional equipment. So, what do you do? Why don't you give Rig it a call? Speak to the man and just say to him, I haven't had my rig checked for a long time. Can you come and have a look? Now, we asked on, uh, on, on the boat for Jared and the Paul to have stay lock fittings on the bottom of the wires. Now the compression fitting at the top doesn't fill with dirt because it's facing downwards, so it's less risk, a lot less risk. But the one at the bottom is at more risk. So the boys asked the guy at Rigget if he would put stay lock fittings. Now I'm not going to get all complicated about this, but these are fittings that don't need compression. They use a cone uh, and an expansion method with the wire to stop it pulling. They are actually stronger than the wire they hold. If you talk to the guy from Rigget, he'll be only too pleased to give you the information you want to know, or he may say to you, in your situation, he would suggest this, or he would suggest that. There's also things today like Dyneema. Now, in more racing yachts, you find Dyneema being used because it is virtually as strong as steel. So things like backstays and such like, you know, they and even cap shrouds and lower shrouds, they use Dyneema. But you see a lot of it on catamarans. Now, the roller furling. Roller furlings usually have bearings. Now, did you wash your bearings out the last time you had a trip? Don't use hot water. If you want to wash them out, just get a hose with cold water and give it copious amounts of water. That'll wash the salts out. If you use warm water, you solidify the salts and make it worse. Don't use sprays on it. You don't need to. Usually the Delrin rollers, which aren't affected, um, well they are actually, they're affected by, some of them are affected by lubricants and it breaks them down and makes them worse. The foils that are going up the forestay, they're aluminium. They get rain down them, they get dirt down them. You know, when was the last time you had that off and had it checked? The last thing you'd want is your full stay parting somewhere and your mask coming down. So you have a couple of choices there. On the roller full stay, you can have the type that has a rope wrap around it and the rope comes back to the cockpit. And when you pull your sail out, you take one of the sheets, you pull the sail out and your sail is set. When you want to roll the sail away, you undo the sheet, <coughs> excuse me, you un uh, undo the sheet, you take hold of the line and you pull it backwards towards you and it rolls the furler until it rolls the sail away. Another system you can get is called Profil. Now this uses a continual line. 
I have sailed four yachts with this system on. Personally, this is just my personal opinion, being an old sod, I do like it. You have less rope cluttering the cockpit. It's a very easy system to use. It's one-handed and it's virtually fail-safe. But it is something that has to be set up correctly. So again, get professional help. People say to me all the time, yeah, but if I go to a professional, it costs me a fortune. It, co you know, it costs, it costs, it costs. You decided to buy a boat. And the expression is, a boat is a hole in the water you pour money in. To a degree, that is true. But it's like everything. If you don't maintain, it's going to cost you more. If you didn't maintain your rig properly, let's see what could happen. You go out, it's a two or three, you're going out for a nice afternoon sail, and you think, oh yeah, we'll go. We go 20 miles out and 20 miles back, you know, that's four, five, hour, eight hours, nice sail for the day, it's a lovely day. But you get out, and you're out, you're 20 miles out, your average speed's five knots, that's four hours away, and a front comes through. And you suddenly find yourself in seven and eights. So you're reefing down, you're on a, say you're on a beam reach or a broad reach. The strain on that mast is phenomenal. What happens if you haven't checked your rig and suddenly <coughs> the aft stay or the forestay snaps or the top, the uh, cap shroud snaps, you've lost your mast. Now mast overboard, you think, well, okay, we cut it loose. And, oh. You can cut it loose with. You can't cut it with a knife. You carry bolt croppers, professionally made bolt croppers. Speak to rig it, he'll tell you he probably supplies them. You don't cut the wire, you cut the rigging screw, the bottle screw, the one with the threads. That's what you cut. You cut it through in one go. If you're trying to cut wire, it's very, very difficult. Now, there are special cutters for cutting wire, but they're horrendously expensive. So now you say, I haven't got any bolt cutters. So the mast is alongside the boat attached by a wire. Your boat is on a beam or broad reach or even head to wind. That mast is filling with water and bashing the side of the boat. I repaired a uh, Wesley Centaur. Yeah, a West, no, yes, a Wesley Centaur that lost his mast. It took him 20 minutes to get it back on board. And by the time he had... He had a two and a half thousand pound repair to do to the boat with a mast and pump through and he's very lucky not to lose the boat. Worst case scenario, I always tell on all my videos, prepare for the worst, pray for the best. So preparation in all things. So you see, it is cost effective because if you went to rig it and he came along and said to you, yes, okay, sir, it's X amount of hundreds of pounds to redo your rig. You think, Hell, that's expensive. But the next time you're out, and it all turns to the proverbial, and the weather gets really crappy, and you're really banging around, in the back of your mind you're thinking, thank God I went to rig it and got my rigging done. Because I know that's not going to fail. Sales are the same thing. Have you had your sales service? Is the stitching okay? Are they losing shape? Poor shape sales, poor sailing boat. You can lose a couple of knots with just crap sails. Take them to your local sail loft, get them to restitch them, get them to valet them, or ask them what a new set of sails would cost. They can be recut sometimes, sometimes they can be recut, restitched, you know, new patches put in eyes and such like. But as far as the rigging goes, it can mean your life. It's like anything on the boat. When do you last check your sea cocks? When do you last check your, your, your rudder glands, the rudder tube? Are the bearings greased, uh, if you have bearings, or are they actual bearings? Some of them have these um, tufnel bearings, you know, they need looking at, they wear. You know, when your boat's out, just grab all the rudder, give it a shake, see if it moves. If it moves too much, same with the prop. Have a go at moving your prop. The shaft bearing might be knackered. While it's out, get it done. A shaft bearing isn't very expensive, but it is if it lets water in and it breaks down and your shaft bends. So, I diverse a little on the rigging, but please, please remember, it's cost effective to spend your money before you go out. And before you go out, it's a car ride. You drop down to someone like Riggett and just say to him, 
excuse me, could you have a look at my rigging and just tell me if it's okay? It's not in a guy's interest to say to you, oh, you definitely need all new rigging. But the guy might turn around and say, well, your roller furling's knackered, mate. Well, your full stay is not too clever. Well, the attachment for your back stays uh, looking a bit dodgy. Or one of your lower shroud, one of your lower shrouds is dodgy, which means you could get mass bend. You wouldn't be able to get your sail down. Um, that boom, the attachment to the boom, not very clever there, mate. He might turn around and say, well, it's going to cost you two or three hundred pounds just out of those little things done. Two or three hundred pounds. Two or three thousand pounds repair to the boat if you lose your mast. And what price your life? I'm not being over dramatic. These things really do happen. I've been there. I've seen them happen. Unfortunately, I've managed to get back. So thanks for watching again, folks. Please be safe. Be prepared. Preempt. Go and see a professional. Get your rig checked. Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Any comments? Gratefully received. Bye for now.